What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out some of the top features contained inside of Artisan, the sculpting tool set for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Artisan is a sculpting tool set for SketchUp that you can use in order to um, basically do a bunch of different things having to do with sculpting and soft selection and other things like that. So it's super powerful from that standpoint and it comes with a number of different tools for um, kind of like non-hard surface modeling or like soft selection modeling, sculpting, that kind of thing. So as of right now, Artisan is still on sale as a part of their Black Friday sale through, uh, I think it's end of day tomorrow. So you can check that out through the sketchupessentials.com slash artisan. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I will receive a commission. Um, and the guys over at Mindsight Studios did get me a copy of Artisan to try out as well. But let's go ahead and jump into this and take a look at some of the features contained inside of this tool. All right, so at, at kind of its heart, Artisan has a couple different ways that you can affect geometry. And so one of the ways that I think is pretty cool is when you go into artisan mode. And so what artisan mode does is it gives you the ability to do like soft selections, right? So in regular SketchUp, if I move an object, the object itself is going to move and then the attached geometry is going to move, but it doesn't move much beyond that. Artisan mode gives you the ability to select things inside of your model. And then if you want to, you can hold the control key and screw your mouse up and then you can let off and notice what that's going to do is that's going to do a soft selection, meaning within that selection, the stuff in the middle, if you tap the M key and move it is going to move up, but then you're going to have kind of a fall off between the stuff that you're moving right here and the other edges. So what that means is that means that you can use this in order to create like gradual slopes or um, things that are much different than just kind of like your typical push pulled geometry. And so note that the soft selection is not only going to work with the move tool, it's also going to move with the rotate tool and you can use your regular keyboard. So when you're in artisan mode and you select and then you tap like the Q key, that's going to automatically put you in the rotate tool like this, and then you can use this in order to rotate that geometry. And again, notice how you're getting that kind of like soft fall off on the outside of your selection. So um, when you're in artisan mode, it's gonna kind of like lock you into this mode so that you can use the other editing tools in SketchUp in order to make those changes. And then when you wanna toggle it off, you can just click here to toggle it off. And so not only does artisan have the tool set for like that soft selection and movement um, functionality, it also has a complete sculpting tool set. And so the sculpting tool set is going to, if you click on it, pop up this little window right here, and you can use it to sculpt your geometry. And so you can use this in order to basically do sculpting directly inside of SketchUp. And you can adjust things about the brush, right? So what that means is that means that I can make this brush smaller and do like a simpler, gentler, version of the sculpt if I want to do that. But there's a number of different brushes in here that can do different things. Like the pinch brush is going to allow you to take part of this and kind of like pinch it together around a point. This is basically like pinching a piece of clay directly inside of SketchUp. And so note that you can make your brush bigger or smaller by tapping the up or down or left or right keys. So notice how that's controlling your radius and your strength, meaning you don't have to come over here and adjust it in order to make changes or anything like that. And so one of the cool things about this tool, and I'm gonna go back to the sculpt brush for a second, is if you adjust the detail, what this is gonna do is this is actually going to add detail to your scene right here. So I'm gonna bring that strength way down bring that radius down as well. But notice if you adjust the detail right here, this is going to automatically come in here and kind of like subdivide this and add additional detail where you're sculpting. Meaning this gives you the ability to quickly come in here and add additional detailed geometry in here in areas where you want that to be. Um, but it's not going to affect the rest of your model or anything like that, right? So it's only adding that detail where you're clicking and working in your scene like this. So you can kind of see what that's doing with the geometry right here, which is pretty cool. And so there's a number of interesting brushes that are contained in here. So one of my favorites is the grade brush. And so the grade brush works differently than the other ones in the sense that it's designed specifically to help you work with grades 
inside of your model, meaning this one in particular is designed to help you actually create like slopes. And so the cool thing about that grade brush tool is it gives you the ability to lock an angle. So let's say for example that I wanted to create something that sloped up this hill. I can hold the control key and for whatever reason I'm having to hold the shift key which I thought it was just a control hold but I'm holding control and shift. It probably doesn't really matter but if I come in here and I click like this notice how it locks my brush to that angle. Well, now if I come here and paint and you can use this either with additional detail or not. It's kind of up to you but notice how this is going to paint this grade to that angle right here. So you can use this in order to set a slope like this really quickly within your model. And so then I could come back in here and just do a control shift and lock this to flat. But notice how then I could use this in order to take certain grades and flatten them out based on a certain height like this. So from an editing terrain standpoint, and notice how this basically locks the flat stuff to whatever elevation you clicked on. So over here, if I wanted to flatten this out, notice how I can do that just like this. So this gives me a tool where I can actually set slopes as well as add things like flatness really easy, easily inside of SketchUp. So from a grading standpoint, this is probably one of the better grading tools that I've seen for giving you the ability to create those realistic grades. Oh, and one other thing a bunch of people don't know about with the slope brush is if you right click and you click in the option for display slopes, you can actually use this to see the slopes and grades inside of your model, right? So notice how the flat ones are displayed as blue um, and then the steep ones are displayed as red. Well, if you right click in here in your slope settings, you can set the lower and upper limits, right? So if you want anything that's over say 30%, you can just adjust that to 30%, click on OK. Now it's going to show you all grades over 30% in a red shading, right? So you can also toggle off the gradient, but generally you don't want to do that. Generally you want to leave that on here, um, but you can use this in order to do like an analysis of the slopes inside of your model to see if everything is completely, uh, completely flat or not using the um, display slopes function. And so say you've come in here and you've created this and it has a bunch of geometry and let's go back over here. Um, there's actually a tool in here to help you reduce the amount of geometry in here, which is called the reducer brush, which is right here. And so what this is going to do is this is going to let you click and drag across the surface and notice what it's doing is it's reducing the amount of geometry in here like this. And so you can use this to reduce the amount of detail on your surfaces inside of SketchUp. So notice how you are going to lose some of that detail in here. Obviously you can kind of see that with the hidden geometry on where it's um, basically removing some of the geometry and simplifying the surface. But if you do want to simplify a surface in here, this is actually really easy to do with this tool to get rid of some of that extra geometry. So another tool that's interesting is this tool right here, which allows you to actually paint a material on a surface, right? Because we don't really have that ability in SketchUp. You can kind of like select multiple surfaces and then apply a material to them. The paint tool is actually going to give you the ability to paint on a surface. So say I wanted to add a rock, I can um, hold the Alt key in order to sample a surface. And so I'm gonna adjust this radius down a little bit, but notice how I can come in here and I can actually paint along this surface in a way that we typically haven't really been able to do in SketchUp before. So you can kind of adjust this down if you want to, but notice how this is allowing me to paint kind of a rock on this surface right here. And then I could sample another material. So say like the grass or something like that. And I could paint that down below like this. So it's just kind of a different way of applying these materials inside of SketchUp um, in order to be able to kind of do whatever you want in here. And then say that you wanted some additional paving or something like that up on top, you could hold Alt, sample that, then go with one of these materials right here. So this gives you the ability to actually like paint those materials rather than applying them manually. And there is also a tool in here called the select brush. And so what the select brush does is it allows you to paint a selection on here. So if you want to pick up materials and kind of like a non-organic or kind of in a non 
in, in a way that doesn't require you to use like the lasso select or a box select, you can use the paint select to select multiple different pieces of geometry just like this. So note that you could use that to um, select some geometry and then use things like the artisan transform, right, with the soft select radius like this. And notice how you can see that soft select radius and you can control it by holding control and scrolling your mouse wheel. But then say I was to make a change or a movement, notice how you've got that soft selection in here. So you do have a select brush to select geometry. All right, and so this also has a complete tool set for subdivision modeling, meaning it's got some tools in here for working with your quad base underlying geometry, as well as tools for subdividing your model. So for example, say I've got this like very simple vase that I've created really quickly. Well, you can come in here and if you group the geometry, you can click in here and you can do a subdivision of that object. And that's gonna put you in a mode where you can preview both the original object and your final object or the other way around like this. You can see the quads that are in here, other things like that. But if you do this with a group, what that means is that means that until you click on the commit button, you can actually click off of here and notice how you're gonna be able to see that, but you can activate this tool and come back in here and make changes. So until you commit it, this is actually live and you can make those changes. And then if you wanna just work with your geometry some more, you can click on the remove button. Now there are some interesting tools in here for doing things with your quad geometry. So like for example, say I wanted to inset this face in, but I wanted to do it in a quad way. Well, if I use the SketchUp offset tool, notice how this isn't actually going to create quads, it's gonna create this ingon, which is a shape with more than four corners or more than four sides. But if I use the inset tool right here, so if I use the inset faces tool, notice that's gonna give me the ability to inset this in, it's gonna retain those quads like this. Then I could take this, move it down, do whatever it is that I wanna do, but now, if I come back in here and I subdivide this, this is gonna subdivide better because that is quad geometry in here. So you can use that in order to work with your quads really quickly. One thing I like about that one is it does also give you the ability to adjust the way that your faces are split when you do the inset. So say I was to create a surface like this one, right, and run that tool. So I'm gonna run inset faces, I can click and notice how I can tap the Alt key in order to adjust the way that the individual faces are created, right? So if I hold the Alt, or if I tap the Alt key and move this in, this is going to actually offset everything in like this. Or if I tap it again, it's gonna offset the individual edges. So you can use this to do both individual edges as well as um, groups of faces at once, depending on what you're trying to do. And so a lot of the time when you're working with this kind of modeling, you need the ability to add additional geometry. Because right now, what this is doing, and I'm going to make this unique, what this is doing is this is subdividing this object like this, but it's kind of subdividing it into a sphere. However, if you were to take this object select it all, there's a subdivide tool that you can use in order to subdivide those faces. Well, that's gonna give you an entirely different result, right? If you look at this, I'm gonna click off of it right here. Notice how, because I have that additional geometry in here, that's going to create this shape, which is a significantly different shape. And so by adding those subdivisions, you're really changing the way that this works in SketchUp. And you do also have the ability to crease edges. So say I was to select these edges and add a crease to them, right? So you can crease them all the way to one, or you can hold control, click to drag in order to adjust the crease strength. And I'm gonna go ahead and crease this as well to one. But then if I rub that, run that subdivision right here, we're gonna click off of this. You can see how that upper corner, because those objects are creased, they don't actually get subdivided. So you can control the strength of the subdivision on your objects using that crease function. And note that this is live, meaning if I come in here and I select these faces, I can select the old geometry like this, 
and I could push pull this back, we'll notice how that is being subdivided as a part of this tool so you can adjust that original geometry. Now, one thing that you can't do with the SketchUp push pull tools, if I tap the P key, notice how I can't select multiple faces in order to do this, but there is a tool in here called Extrude Faces, which will allow you to extrude multiple faces at once like this, which really makes it a lot easier for you to come in here and make those changes. So if you do want to extrude those multiple faces, this has a tool in here that'll allow you to do that. All right, so definitely kind of a niche product, but it has a super cool tool set built in for working with both subdivision modeling as well as sculpting. So if that is something you're interested in, I will link to Artisan on this page. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this tool. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.